Well, good afternoon, and uh, thank you, uh, Mark, uh, dear mentor of mine, and really uh, so many mentors in the audience, people that I look up to, and I'm sure some new folks that I'll get to meet today. Uh, I'm Efrain Talamantes, Chief Operations Officer for Health Services. Uh, what does that mean? We're a federally qualified health center in Southern California, Orange County, and Los Angeles serve about close to 400,000 patients now. Just to give you an idea, this past um, year during the pandemic, uh, we nearly vaccinated close to 100,000 uh, patients uh, in, in the Southern California area. Um, so this is um, very important to me in terms of a topic because as a chief operations officer, I oversee uh, medical, dental, behavioral health, clinical pharmacy, uh, health education. So you can imagine that the uh, breadth of uh, workforce uh, for us is really important. And um, I think that what concerns me as a physician and more importantly as a leader in healthcare uh, is the opposite, is that if you look at some of the quality measures in the outcomes, health outcomes um, in underserved communities specifically, we haven't made that much gain. Um, so either those metrics that we're using historically aren't the right ones, going back to Mark's point, meaning that if we continue to use uh, GPA, MCAT, um, and or STEP scores as the only measure of success, it is unlikely we'll improve outcomes in underserved communities. Uh, what our patients ask for is someone who understands their experience, respects them, not just because of race, ethnicity, gender, uh, but understands their living situation isn't gonna make a short-sighted recommendation that actually might cause more hurt, uh, go buy healthy food um, than pain. Um, you know, making them feel ashamed of their inability to live in a community where there is healthy food, uh, where there is access to uh, good food pantries or um, low-income um, affordable, affordable food. So why the community college? When I started mentoring early on, uh, had a, many of my students who inspired this work because they would continue to come up to me and say, Efrain, there's no way that I'm gonna make it because I'm starting off at the community college. So well, what do you mean, make it? Um, yes, medical schools don't favor us community college students. Hogwash, if you're good, you're gonna get in. And boy, was I wrong. So. <laughs> Meeting the need of our uh, patients is primary and most important. And I think this revolution, um, and again, huge fan of everyone here and for the next several days in the work you lead, because you understand this clearly and you continue to challenge yourself and learn more about it. But we know that whether a patient has diabetes, hypertension, it's not the same. Um, not just from a science perspective, but from a social perspective in how those patients um, have to go through this disease process and the treatments we have to select, right? We think they're all the same, but oftentimes uh, we have to tailor those, make them more personal uh, to each of those situations to achieve equitable outcomes, meaning that we get these patients to the best possible health outcomes regardless of their social situation, regardless of their insurance, regardless of uh, who they are, who they represent. Very difficult. So really that we are striving uh, from going from this idea of understanding that there are barriers and some are left out, like our little guy not able to watch the soccer game here, um, or gal, but also that uh, we understand that um, Oftentimes, equity uh, gets misperceived as uh, us adding more or doing more um, to be able to get someone over to see the game, when in reality, what we're talking about today and some of what you've um, heard uh, already is that we have to look at the existing barriers and remove those barriers, challenge those barriers to understand. So yes, we haven't made that much headway um, but why is that? So when you go back to the pipeline, and yes, we can go as far as we can, um, but really when uh, the students were coming to me asking, I partnered with the Association of American Medical College and asked the question, how many, uh, what percent of students that actually uh, go attend medical school are uh, in community college? Unanswered question. So that was a, a really neat opportunity for us to answer that question. Um, and if you remember uh, what was happening during this time period is, you know, the, the last recession we were in, 
And so you could see that uh, a larger proportion of students uh, that were um, attending medical school uh, had attended community college. Um, and again, it's economics. Uh, we know that students will select uh, lower income uh, college pathways to medical school. But I also wasn't fully grasping the picture of, well, what do we mean by community college? And the conceptual model is a little more complicated because a community college can be uh, central in a different variety of experiences. So we were talking to students that had attended community college during high school who didn't have access to AP courses or advanced courses, uh, requirements to get into college. So then they would go, go to a four-year university or the traditional college pathway, which uh, community college pathway, which is you graduate from high school, go to community college, and then go to a four-year and then apply to medical school. We also had students who graduate from four universities and go back to community college to do their pre-med requirements and then apply to medical school. So how does that all play in into, uh, again, whether they're getting accepted or not to medical school? Well, most, one and most importantly is that it is a very diverse group of students. And when you look at uh, them being the first in their families to go to college, it's regardless, at least looking at, at ethnicity, uh, even white students who attend community college are often the first in their family to go to college. Um, so again, looking at a, a, a student population at the community college that is more uh, diverse uh, from a socioeconomic perspective and uh, race eth and ethnicity as well. Um, so acceptance to medical school, the odds ratio, adjusted odds ratio after adjusting for age, gender, race, ethnicity, parental education, MCAS scores, GPA, uh, was that students who attended a community college as a first pathway, meaning they graduate from high school and then uh, go to a four-year, were less likely to get accepted. So even though they actually, uh, again, had similar scores, uh, there were about, uh, um, what is it, close to 20% less likely to get into uh, medical school. Um, however, when you ask these students uh, compared to um, co uh, their colleagues who don't go to didn't go to community college, uh, they were more likely uh, to have intentions. They were already telling us um, through the uh, Association of American Medical College questionnaire that they, were, they wanted to practice in underserved communities. So um, how that really plays out, obviously, uh, in Dr. Bolt writes, uh, we know that many uh, students that are underrepresented or from low socioeconomic um, backgrounds are more likely to serve underserved or those patients that have Medicaid or Medi-Cal in California. And again, this was adjusted for those uh, other factors. So again, the work at the Center for a Diverse Healthcare Workforce, really, uh, we went a step further and said, okay, well, um, how does a community college pathway, uh, what's the association between training and family medicine? Um, and again, that we, we found that after adjustment, uh, those students who attended community college were more likely to train in family medicine, a primary care, a need, and again, uh, a huge need, huge social, um, both societal need uh, in terms of our healthcare workforce across the country is that we need to train more primary care physicians. And they are uh, coming, or at least in, in this association, looking at those that attended community college. So huge benefits. Um, so what does this all mean? Practically, again, going back to the students um, and engaging them. And when I talk to uh, folks across the country, um, in medical schools, medical centers, and ask, uh, what kind of work are you doing at a community college? The uh, first thing they say is, I don't even know the community, college of, uh, uh, community colleges around us. I don't know the students, right? So we're building these programs, but we're not incorporating or including uh, the actual community colleges, um, the, the faculty there, the counselors and the students. And so with that in mind, we uh, partnered with students uh, from the community college mainly, um, who had this vision of developing more uh, mentoring opportunities. And MeMentor.org is uh, an actual app. You can download it uh, and connect with over 15,000 individuals, mostly students, uh, but many, um, uh, not only physicians, but uh, dentists, uh, physicians, assistant nursing associates, uh, nurses. Uh, we have uh, social uh, workers, uh, there's all sorts of folks in the healthcare workforce who are allowing students to get connected to these programs, uh, whether it be uh, some of the programs that uh, Mark presented uh, in terms of uh, the prime programs, 
um, or some of the pipeline programs there as well. So really that there is an opportunity not only to better partner with community college, colleges, but get students involved who can inform some of the strategies and some of the connect, make some of the connections that you need in order to really start uh, ensuring that these students from an early uh, stage are preparing themselves for a uh, health profession program. Um, so again, this is the app. So what does this all mean? Um, we were uh, cited uh, quite a bit uh, on the California Healthcare Workforce Report uh, that was put out uh, a few years ago now, um, but that by 2030, California's healthcare workforce will, be, will reflect the diversity of the state and have the capacity and competencies to improve health, uh, equity, and well-being in all communities. Uh, pretty bold strategies, really, um, that the community college was central to some of the recommendations. It was uh, the second recommendation was to ensure that community college students were incorporated uh, in our ability to recruit, retain, and ensure the advancement of students from community college all the way through undergrad and health professions program. Um, here's uh, Dr. Robles, Dr. Enix, um, who uh, this past year, uh, through Senate Bill 40, uh, secured $10.5 million to create this concept of regional hubs where uh, medical schools are now going to be uh, partnering with community colleges and community health centers uh, like Altamed to be able to really develop, uh, again, a more intentional uh, pipeline of students that are reflective of the community can be successful uh, in these pathways and ensure that um, our workforce in the future reflects the community. Um, so again, and the money is actually coming from the Department of Healthcare Access and Information. Um, so again, really tapping into that, this is not, uh, as stated earlier, uh, about policy. It is really changing not only practices, but ensure that uh, we as uh, healthcare um, delivery systems, um, even at the state level, are investing in this. Uh, and what I've also seen, lastly I'll, I'll share, is that um, this work is also inspiring us at Ultimate in leadership to be more uh, intentional of where we make uh, key investments. Uh, the National Medical Fellows, um, Mi Mentor, um, we've been able to really sponsor and advance that work. And in return, uh, we, every summer, uh, we have over 100 students that come to Ultimate and get to meet our patients and actually um, make some very key contributions to us, uh, the physician leaders, um, in, 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 in really thinking about the work we do and what we need to also accomplish um, to better understand what this concept of health equity is, but more importantly, how we support it. Um, and so again, there's a lot of value, uh, not only to doing this work, but to ensure that we uh, address some of the burnout issues we have in healthcare, because one of the key things our physicians and nurses and dentists share when we have students is that there's a constant refresh and reminder of how important this work is. So I'll stop there and answer any questions. Yes, please. Yeah, we, we attempted to isolate. So there's um, um, the Carnegie Mellon uh, classification system so that you can actually classify institutions by number of research dollars. The question. Oh, and I'll repeat the question. So in Fresno specifically, um, the concern is that um, there might be um, under education for students. Maybe the schools are less prepared to bring 
those students or to get those students from uh, where they are to medical schools per se. Um, and, and yeah, we, we know that there's a lot of variation in all schools, but more importantly, at the community college level, there are community colleges that have more research dollars, which is, uh, again, they may have more faculty that are teaching in the uh, more uh, rigorous sciences. Um, but it's very difficult to um, link that to whether uh, a more, uh, a community college with more research dollars actually produces more folks that actually get accepted to, me to medical school from community college. So we did try to look at that. Um, but that uh, is something that uh, we should definitely look into. Um, but the second comment I'll make is that that is part of our concern overall that we've seen is that many times uh, health professions programs are not being clear with community colleges. So if you talk to, counsel to faculty and counselors, um, we're not being clear in what the goals are uh, for the medical school, medical training program, for example. So when we were able to come together with uh, community colleges, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity um, to influence um, the faculty, the counselors in really thinking, well, what would it take to make our students more competitive? And what would it take uh, to ensure that they can be closer and connected to the medical schools? And uh, that's, I think, the opportunity where pipeline programs that have existed um, again, if you rely on people just applying, you're going to get a very select group of people that uh, are going to get in. But if you're being more proactive and going to the community colleges, then you connect those students. Uh, we, we have some uh, uh, students here today from Mi Mentor that um, have uh, gone through the community college path. Um, again, been told that you're never going to be competitive, you're never going to be successful. Um, and it was this concerted effort to say, no, here's the other things you can do to make yourself more competitive. Um, so, for example, if you're not uh, getting a research, um, you're not in a research program where you can actually conduct, learn how to conduct research, that's something you can do. You don't have to be in Fresno. You can go outside of Fresno to do that. And I know several students from the Central Valley that have done that. Uh, but it is important that we do not discount or um, encourage the same stereotypes of these smaller programs because you can have very competitive students come out of those programs. Oh yeah, so that actually, yeah, my prior mentor at UCLA, Dr. Gerardo Moreno, studied the Cal States, and actually California has done really well um, since that work was published. Um, so California state schools actually, again, we know there's some challenges given the variation of different state schools, um, but they do much, much better than students that go to community college. Uh, so again, you, you, I'm sure you know there is some differentiation between a four-year um, UCLA, you know, pub, big university research university versus a state school. Um, but I, I would say it's the same thing. It's making sure that um, regardless of the institution that the students attend, um, and I think with the SED score, um, you know, historically, I know we we. Um, looked at this in, in the, one of the, the New England Journal perspective is that if you ask people to simply on a statement write why they're socially disadvantaged, um, it's almost, again, putting it on the individual who's applying to explain to you uh, why they're disadvantaged when we know there's some really clear markers. If you are uninsured, health insurance or Medi-Cal, Medicaid, um, versus insured, that alone, you could, you could look into that. So there's a, there's a lot more evolution. I think that's where this is exciting into making sure we're looking at the measures, adding new measures, um, so that we can, again, achieve a different set of results. 
Um, but I think the one, the one clear thing for me from the community college work is that uh, community college students, at least when we did this work, were being disadvantaged uh, from getting into medical school, even if they had the GPA and MCAT scores that schools say they, they're looking for. And so what else is going on, right? Um, and I think that goes back to the broader discussion we're having today. But thank you for that question. I think there's, and maybe we'll go here and. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, UC Davis, you know, really partnering with the local uh, community college, the, you know, really, again, opening up those conversations and discussions, uh, we were able to not only nurture those relationships, but have actual admissions uh, discussions about what is it that uh, medical schools are looking for? Uh, what programs exist now in the community college that need to be better linked uh, to the medical school programs? Um, similar um, in East LA, we have um, uh, East LA Community College, e East LA College. Um, it's a lot of the same discussions about um, what is it that the, the community college is attempting to do and make sure that it's partnered with the four-year university, whether it's a USC, UCLA, um, and then more importantly, uh, having a, a medical school program. And state schools are also part of that discussion because again, uh, most of our community college students will transfer uh, to state schools. I mean, they, they may not or uh, go to a four university, uh, but making sure that alignment is there. And I, and I do think that's part of, uh, again, the monies that are being invested now is really calling that out, that we need the four-year universities to have the partnerships with the community colleges uh, with the medical school. It can't just be in isolation. Um, otherwise, to your point, but, you know, counselors, when we talk to them, um, they remind me of us, primary care docs, you know, 10, 15 minutes in, out, in, out. So it's also, um, again, thinking about um, giving them the tools to put those students in touch. I think most of the students are pretty active, proactive, will take the necessary steps. Um, but they often need to have those tools in hand. Mi Mentor has been an incredible tool um, because counselors can recommend it and the students will take off and then report back and say, here's all the, all the things I've done. Am I ready? Yes, you're ready, right? So those are the kinds of things we're, we're looking to continue to build on. I think there's maybe, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, those are great recommendations. I mean, I think that it's not just building those relationships and linking the programs, uh, but to your point, is helping them also with their own uh, development because they may be looking to improve their grant funding for allied health professions. Uh, they have hubs. Um, I, uh, when we participated, uh, when, we were at, when I was at UC Davis, um, they had the concept of community of practice. And so we would participate uh, with them. And from that also develop our own ideas of how we can become more competitive to bring in additional resources. Um, but, but I agree, I think it, again, it's not just getting folks, I think a lot of our folks uh, have an interest, like you know, at a four year, a lot of folks have interest in going to medical school. But the key for us is it's to make sure they understand the benefit of going into a variety of different health professions. And we've had students who have said, you know, I'm gonna to go to dental school instead. And, and again, that's a win for us. A nursing school, that's a win for us. So making sure those programs are part of that uh, broader discussion.